What is up guys, BKRTV and uh, finally I'm taking the dust off the channel so to speak. I'm finally back with another logo tutorial and as customary for the last couple years I think I've always made a championship tutorial because I'm always learning new things. So this is my championship tutorial for WWE 2K19. Now in the past, in the last couple of years, whenever I make a championship, I always use in-game plates. This time, I've because recently I've been experimenting with custom things, I'm going to show you how to make a custom plate directly onto the strap. Now, the first thing you would want to do is go on Google and find a championship with the strap that you want. Preferably a strap from a current in-game championship. As you can see, I'm using the United States Championship today. So, as always, I'm going to go straight to the pin tool. And we're going to work with the front plate today. So, I want my front plate to somewhat resemble this. The similar shape, because whichever strap you go with, you want it to fit. You want the dimensions to roughly work with it so that it, you don't get a lot of space around the sides, especially at the top and the bottom. So I'm going to firstly trace the outside of the championship, but I'm not going to do the nameplate United States Champion bit because I'm going to tweak the shape slightly. So I'm just going to finish doing the outside part. There we go. And then what I want to do is all my edits or all my changes to the outside shape I want to do while I still only have half the championship because if I do it later, I'm gonna to have to try and do it on both sides and it's gonna become a lot more hassle than it's worth. I might as well do it while I still have half the championship to work with. So I'm gonna untick it so I can still see the lines but I can still see the shape under it. I'm just gonna click on individual nodes and then use my arrow keys just to tweak it a bit so it's in a place that I like the look. And then what I'm gonna do is clicking on the line, I'm gonna curve some of these lines so they're not, just, they're not so straight. There's a bit of a curve to this championship, especially on the outer side. And then up here, I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm looking at. The curve is really subtle. So instead of me having to curve the lines individually, at the top here, we have these convert options. Currently, this is a square node. I'm going to convert that to a smart node, which as you can see, makes the line on either side of that node the exact same as each other. Just a little trick there if you want to get an even line but at the end of the day that's now made this part here uneven so I'm now going to make that snap perpendicular to the square node so now at least when they join up it will be a continuous line and I'm gonna do the same with this one but I'm gonna instead use this little node here to just lessen the curve just a little bit and then for these sides I'm gonna leave as is because I'm gonna have those a bit more pointier so I'm gonna tick that so I can view it again I'm gonna untick the strap for a sec so I can just see what I'm doing I'm gonna make it black as well flip it duplicate and flip as always and then we can combine it and there we go there is our front plate outer design done. So the difference between making a custom plate and a plate on an existing in-game plate is the gold you have to actually put in yourself this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it black for a sec just so we can see but what I'm going to do is because I like my championships to have a engraved outline sunk in about I don't know a 
a little bit away from the outside edge. So to do that I usually duplicate it about four times. Now this one is where all my patterns are going to go into and there's a way I do it which I'll show in a second so I'm going to keep that one unticked for now but I will give it a little bit of an outline actually no I'm not going to do that one I'm going to keep that one unticked but each of these are going to have outlines but no fill and the reason for that is the fill would then interrupt the detailing layer and I only want this to work with the outside edge. So we have these alignment options. I'm going to set the alignment option to inside the line. So the line will come on the inside of this blue outer bit. So that way it doesn't expand out and doesn't make the plate bigger than it should be. And then each of these I'm going to have but at a higher gradient as I can move my way down. So as you can see, 10, 20, I'm going to type it this time, 30. But the 21, I'm going to set to a raise. So as you can see, if I now group those at least, it's a little hard to tell. So what I'm going to do is not do that. I'm going to change the stroke. Oh, I'm on the color picker tool. That explains why. I'm going to change the stroke to maybe red so you can at least see what I'm doing. You now have this outer design. So, I'm now going to tick this one, which is our layer, and I'm going to remove all color from it and set it to erase. So what I'm going to do is in this group as well, I'm going to move all of those other layers into this as well. I'm just going to duplicate that bottom one one more time because we need to keep one on the outside of the group because that's going to be our background colors. And then I'm going to make this red as well. So now we've got that, I'm going to go to my tools, I'm going to go to the text tool and I have a dingbat font for like a bit like a textury design. Just going to scroll down until I can find it. Do, 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 do. It would really help if I remembered what these were. So we're going to try this. Ornament one. And as you can see, depending on which button I press or leather, we get a different design. So we're gonna try this one here. Place it somewhere roughly in the middle. And now if we put it in to that curve that we made, arranged and set without a fill, it stays inside and this outline keeps it from reaching the engraved outline we put earlier on. So now I can put this where on I'm going to make it big enough that it completely covers the plate. And there we go. I'm going to say about there. And as you can see we now have more engraved areas. So what I'm going to do now is add some text, some actual text that we want. But before I do that, actually, I'm going to throw in a globe because as always, I put globes into my championships. So let's go with this globe here. I'm going to put that into the center roughly. I'm going to put it in the group because every detailing piece is going to go inside this group. I'm going to make it red, I'm going to duplicate it, give the bottom one a stroke, maybe about, I'm going to give it 30 because I want a fairly big stroke around it. I'm going to change the miter just to make all the edges a bit more pointier. 
I'm going to set this one to arrays because that way it will remove all the red outside of it. I'm going to select both and move it down a little bit. There we go. That's another part of our championship done. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to add the text, you know, like the text that says world champion or whatever. So what I'm going to do there, go to text tool again, remove my outline, pick a font I like the look of, we'll go with this big noodle titling font, put that inside and then tweak it to it's roughly the size you like the look of. I'm going to put that about there. And there we go. And now, but for champion, I want it to actually curve. I don't want it to just be straight. So what I'm going to do is I draw a circle roughly the size I need it to be. What you're looking for is with the outline, you want the curve of the outline to somewhat be the curve of the text. So you place it where you want. Now, if I go to the text tool with this ellipse selected, I can click along the outline, providing it works. And the problem with this is, if you have text under it, it doesn't register. So sometimes you might have to take it outside of your shape just to get it to work. But then what you see here is, it becomes a text curve. So if I now type the word champion, it naturally starts at the top of the circle. So what I'm going to have to do is I have to, one, center align it, and two, hit enter first, and then these little sliders here that you control where it goes. So there's that, there's our curve champ. I can now place it in the center, making sure it is halfway, because I'm working on the 1024 by 512 canvas. I want the X value to be 512. So that is our championship. It's pretty crude, it's basic, but every technique I use I've shown now. So I'm going to just tick the old plate on again because I want to get the gold color. So if I go to the group, go to color overlay, and then select the gold color, Preferably the darker color because you don't want to pick a color that's currently got like a light on it because that won't be a true reflection of the gold color. But I also want to move the text inside. What I want to do now, because I'm going to, for argument's sake, for the sake of this belt, it's going to be a completely gold championship. I'm going to take this and make it gold, but I'm also going to go to HSL and the effects down here and darken that just a little bit, or just enough for you can, to tell a clear color differentiation. So I'm gonna run ticket, there's our plate again. Gonna go to the group, gonna go to emboss, and the settings I use for emboss is I first unlock these, set the radius to one, depth to five, I'm gonna go with the emboss, and I like to set the yeah, move to 90. Now, if I was doing this on an in-game plate, I would then invert it. But the reason I don't want to invert it is because what I'm embossing is on the outside of the plate. So if I embossed it, it would sink, as you can see, it would sink the gold into the strap when I put it in in-game. So I leave it off, leave it like this. And here is a basic championship plate so that's one way you can do this and then what you can do is the exact same for the side plates and you can in theory because it's worked for me at least if you do it like this you can put all of the logos the front plate the side plates onto the same logo and then at least when you import it in game because they're all in the same logo the spacing is correct between each plate, providing you make sure when you stretch it in the game, you keep it in the center, it will stay perfectly spaced. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna take this plate, I'm gonna import it into the game, 
and show you guys what to do once you're in there. Okay, so I'm now in 2K19, I'm in Create Championship and I have a title ray. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to go to the United States plate, which is Original Championship 10. And now because we're doing custom plates, we don't need the front or sides. So what we can do is go to each one and hide it. And there we go. Now we have a clean strap ready to put our championship design on. Now the logos, if you're doing it the way I did it where you have your front and your sides on the same logo, then you would import it as a 1024 by 512. And here we go. Right at the end. Go through all the notions to get to the sizing bit and then you just size the logo until it fits as much of the canvas as you want it to or as much as the strap so to speak which it looks about right there and then as you can see if I was to spin it it has absolutely no shine to it at all so we can go to material go to steel and steel by default embosses at 20 if you come to find that's not working you can always drop it down I usually work somewhere around 10 and there we go there is our championship on the strap looks nice and what I like to do is I like to just double check it looks decent in the match lighting on the lighting preview because if it works there it will work in superstar entrances and that is the tutorial it's on there it's nice it's metallic and doesn't use any in-game thing other than the strap that it's that it's on so that has been BKR TV that's been my tutorial for this year on how to make custom championships please like and subscribe for more hopefully more tutorials and I will catch you guys on the next one peace